Carbonite availability gives businesses the ability to create a secondary environment of a virtual server that they can fail over to instantly if there's ever an outage on the source. This video shows you how to create and fail over to the secondary environment. Start by selecting the source server in the Carbonite Replication Engine console. Highlight the server you want to replicate and select Protect. This adds the server to the console. Then select the workload type. You can choose to replicate individual files and folders or an entire physical or virtual server. Next, select the target server. Select where the virtual recovery appliance is hosted. You'll then be taken to the Set Options screen where you begin configuring the protection job. The option for Replica Virtual Machine Location lets you choose where on the target server you want to store the Replica Virtual Machine. The Replica Virtual Machine Configuration option shows you how the source is configured and allows you to mirror these attributes on the target. The option for Replica Virtual Machine Volumes shows you the size of the source volume and how much of it is used, with options for configuring the Replica VM. The Replica Virtual Machine Network Settings option offers IP and DNS options for the Replica VM. The Test Failover option allows you to perform a test failover prior to switching production over to the Replica VM. Failover Monitor allows you to set parameters for when a failover threshold has been reached. Under Failover Options, you can choose to trigger failover manually or automate it so it happens once the failover threshold has been met. Under Failover Identity, you can have the target assume the IP address of the source or retain the target network configuration and trigger a DNS update, which is useful for working across different subnets. The option for Mirror, Verify, and Orphan files allows you to determine how the software inspects data on the target and determines differences. Under Network Route, you can specify the path that the replica data takes to go to the target VM. The Snapshots option lets you determine the interval between when snapshots are taken. The option for Compression lets you adjust the size of replication data that you're transmitting over the network. The Bandwidth option lets you limit the size of replica data traveling over the network, with options for scheduling different limits for different times of day. Once you're finished configuring options, click Next to be taken to the screen for reverse protection. Normally, without reverse protection, the target server is lost after a failover. The reverse protection feature allows you to store a copy of the target's system state so that after failover, you can continue protection for the data running on the new, failed over replica VM. Check the box to configure reverse job options. Then, choose where the virtual recovery appliance will be hosted after the job is reversed. Next, choose the virtual recovery appliance and the data store and configure the option for replica virtual machine volumes that will be used during reverse protection. Once you're finished configuring reverse protection, you'll be taken to a pre-flight checklist. If everything looks okay, select Finish to begin replicating the source server. You'll be taken back to the replication console where you can monitor the replication job as the baseline synchronization begins. Once the baseline synchronization is complete, the server enters a protected state. Now, let's simulate an outage on the source to see how the virtual replica server responds. Back in the console, an error message appears, notifying you of the outage. Depending on how you've configured the failover monitor and failover options, the software will continue to monitor the source for additional failover conditions before determining if a failover threshold has been met. Once the threshold has been met, failover happens automatically if you've configured it that way but you can also configure this solution to wait for someone to trigger failover manually. You have a few options, including initiating a manual failover to live data, performing a test failover, or failing over to a snapshot. During a live failover, the virtual replica assumes the identity of the source and traffic is routed to the new VM. The console indicates when a failover is complete. It also enables the reverse protection option if you've configured it. The console updates the status of the reverse protection job as it configures and creates the replica virtual machine to enable reverse protection. As users work off the virtual replica server, the solution continues to monitor activity, sending changes to the virtual recovery appliance you designated for reverse protection. That's how you create and fail over to a secondary virtual replica environment using Carbonite availability. Thanks for watching.